Sunday, and we thank you for this new season and new year. We pray, Lord, for this word this morning. We welcome all the pastors from around the world, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Uganda, Nigeria, South Africa, all over the earth. Uh, we pray that you would uh, have an ear to hear this morning, have an ear to hear what God is saying for this next uh, decade, for the next year, 2021. Uh, we've been sharing a prophetic word. If you didn't uh, be able to watch it, view it, you can go to my YouTube page, Albert Buford. And uh, last week's message is on YouTube, the first part of 2021. A lot of revelation, uh, a lot of insight of what God is commanding and speaking from the throne of God. And uh, we're going to pick up part two of the apostolic press and warfare. And uh, we're going to talk about the how-to uh, this morning, how to bring in this uh, uh, glory and apostolic uh, move of God in the earth realm. Amen. So, Father, bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, welcome this morning. I'm going to do a quick review, a quick overlay we talked about last week. Uh, I said that uh, we're under a three-pronged attack uh, with hatred, with fear, with greed, uh, the corrupt. Uh, uh, Satan has shut down the whole world. God allowed him to release the virus. He didn't, God didn't do it, but he allowed the virus to come as an instrument to bring the body of Christ to its knees, to bring the body of Christ to its senses, to bring the body of Christ to begin to reflect and begin to look at our own heart and make sure our heart is right and get things together right. And uh, we said that this is a, 2021 is a, new, a year beginning, new beginning. The Bible says in Genesis 1-1, uh, in the beginning, the first day, the first one is the number one. It means unity. It also means, we said that one also means to press or to totter. In the Hebrew, 5781 uh, means a press or to be pressed down to totter. And we talked about it a little bit uh, last. Uh, and we talked about one of the key words is sanctification for the believer. Setting yourself apart. During this pandemic, we've had opportunity to be shut down, uh, come apart, get to know your family again, get to know relationships again. People have been structured down. The children are more happy now that they've seen their parents more than what they've been seeing their parents. Parents aren't happy, but the children are happy. <laughs> and uh, people are being challenged to homeschool their children. You know, they have to learn something. The parents have to relearn some stuff. And uh, we talked about uh, God said that I'm going to, in Amos 7, Amos 2, he said, Behold, I'm pressed under you and I'll press you down in your place as a cart presses that is full of sheaves, like a heavy pressed down cart. God said, I'm going to press you down. So uh, I talked about it. God said, I'm gonna, he's going to press us. He's going to press uh, people down. But it's not uh, a judgment pressing, put it that way. We are, judgment has already begun because those are in lawlessness and rebellion. So judgment has already begun on people that don't know God. But one of the things God wanted us to do uh, during this time is to reflect and to uh, uh, repent of, of things that we didn't do or we should have done and uh, 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 get back on course with God, get back connected with God. And uh, we said that uh, there will be a resistance from uh, the Pharisee church leaders. There's, there's a separating of the church even has taken place even now with those that have rejected the prophetic, rejected deliverance, rejected the apostolic, uh, set themselves apart. Uh, they, they, they got mega churches. Uh, the pastor can't preach what he wants to preach because the board of directors says don't teach him, don't let him speak in tongues, don't teach him this, don't let him do this. And he's controlled by the, the, the deacon board and, and, and the elder board, and they can't do what they want to do. But God in this 2021 is going to begin to filter out and call out his people out of these churches. A lot of people are going to leave those churches because of the pressure that's coming against the church, because of the, the fear, the hatred, the violence and the intimidation that's coming, even this fall, is going to pressure people to get to the place where they, I need to be in a deliverance church. I need to be in a prophetic church. I need to be somewhere where I hear the voice of God and I know what's going on in the earth realm and I, I want to be free. And so we need to expect this resistance as a separating of the sheep from the goats. The goats have dug in. 
Uh, don't come in our denomination preaching that stuff. Don't come in the Methodist church, the Lutheran church, the Protestant church. We don't want to hear no prophecy. We don't want to hear tongues. Don't come in the Catholic church with that stuff. <coughs> Talking about casting out devils. Amen. We, we sprinkle holy water. We don't want to cast out no devil. We'll give you some holy water on you. Amen. But God said he's doing a new thing. So he's going to press. But this press... I believe it's going to be, I said, it's going to be a press of the glory of God. This is good news. It's going to be the kabod of God on the believer that has prepared themselves. The glory and honor of God is going to be on the believer that has prepared themselves. But this glory also is going to press on the unbeliever. God's going to begin to visit them in the night in dreams and in visitations and in visions to, 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 uh, Come back to God. God's got that weight. The glory is going to be so strong on the believer that people are going to follow you in the store. People are going to want to talk to you. How do you get so blessed? Why are you so happy? There's something about you that is different from everybody else. I want to know what's going on. How do I get this blessing? I see you driving that new car and living in that nice house and you got nice clothes on and you're smiling and you're happy and you're paying for people food at the grocery line and you're blessing people. Over. What, what, who, who, who gave this to you? And you can be able to tell them about your God. My God supplied all of my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. So God is using faceless, nameless people to begin to prophesy the word of the Lord, uh, and we shared about uh, Amos said, I was no prophet, I'm just a, 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 a fruit picker, and God told me to come prophesy to you. And I talked about the weight of the word of the prophet and the apostle. Uh, we said 2021 is the one of unity, where unity, there's a divisiveness in the earth, and the enemy wants to divide the church. God said when we come in a unity, he commands the blessing. But the unity doesn't necessarily mean every church. I only need three or four people to touch and agree with me in unity and God to command the blessing. Uh, God's looking for a remnant church that will be in unity that he can op operate in the earth. So this glory is not going to be on everybody. It's going to be on the ones that repented, the ones that prepared their hearts and changed their attitudes and, and dealt with these attitudes during this sh shutdown because you, you were snapping at each other and biting at each other. And if I, God said, I need you to deal with those attitudes because when my glory comes, no flesh can glory in my presence. So we got to get these, this flesh under control, and the time is running out because there's another wave. There's another disease, another plot, another plan of the enemy to re release another disease from China. They already know how to manipulate it. They already know how to engineer these diseases and release it in the earth. And, and, and the battle is here, understand that we're in a war, and people are still don't believe it. We are in World War III right now. It's not a world war of bombs and bullets and, and jets and planes. It's a war of divisiveness, of clandestine, of, of, of propaganda, of false media, of untruths to undermine the foundations and pillars of America, to remove the borders, to uh, let's have same sex, let's, have, let's abort all the babies, let's have all the drugs we want. We want, all, we want to be free to do whatever we want to do. Remove the borders and bring division into the nation, but God's got a plan for that. The enemy shot his best shot with his darkness. Wait till light comes, amen? When the light of God comes into the earth, it's going to be awesome, amen? You're going to be rejoicing, amen? And so God is raising up. He wants some prophets and apostles and saints that are fearless, saints that will stand and won't compromise with the, with the world, won't compromise. And I shared last week, just a review, I'm just reviewing, that uh, uh, the 1 or 57, 81, 1 is the number of uh, uh, first in time, First in order, first in rank. And I talked about the apostle. He, he, weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but are mighty through God. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they're mighty before God for to overthrow and destruction of strongholds. So there's an anointing that God wants to release to overthrow principalities and powers and structures and deal with the pop puppet masters and deal with those that are, are controlling the strings, causing these young men and girls out there to be riding in the street, to be throwing rocks, to be bringing uh, fear and intimidation and violence. There are men and, and spirits that are controlling these men, uh, causing this to happen. So God wants us to deal with these principalities. And these principalities 
the apostles and the prophets are going to give the weight of his word, the weight of his glory is going to come upon them that will bring pressure and, and shake cities and shake nations. I shared last week, uh, Paul, everywhere he went, he tore up the city. I mean, the city was all in chaos, and they were all fighting, and they dying, there ain't no goddess, and, and they got mad at Paul. They had a lower on the window, amen. Elijah had to deal with Jezebel. Elisha dealt with Jezebel. Jehu had to deal with Jezebel. Everybody had something. Uh, John the Baptist had to deal with Herod. He had to go right in his face, hey, amen. You got a woman, and it ain't your wife. You got your brother's wife, and y'all in there in sin, and, 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 you know, and he had to deal with that principality. He had to deal with the principality. There's principality. We got to, we got to deal with the principality that has killed 40 million black babies. That's the spirit. That's an agenda. That's in a plan because the devil's afraid of the prophetic word that is coming out of the black church. I mean, you want some praise? Give going to a black. We, we can praise. Amen. We, we give you some praise and worship. Amen. And the devil don't like that. He's jealous of that. He got kicked out of heaven because he was praise and worship in heaven. And so we are in a place that... Uh, the apostles and prophets have to refute arguments and theory and reasonings that you're hearing on the news. All these, they don't even make sense of what they're doing. There's no rhyme or reason. And as we were in corporate prayer this morning, I said, Lord, if there's such thing as a spirit of common sense, please release it on America. Amen. So people can have some common sense. Amen. We don't even need the Holy Ghost. You need some common sense. <laughs> Praise God. So as I was talking about this, the word warfare, uh, it means the warfare of the apostles or to serve in a military campaign to execute the apostolic with his arduous duties and functions. Uh, my wife uh, ministered Tuesday night talking about in persecution and press down and, and, and Paul said I was beaten many times. I was among thieves and robbers. It was persecution. It was pressure. It was arduous duty, but you have a mindset that I'm a warrior and I ain't going to ever stop being a warrior. I have a military career. You know, there are certain civilians that work in technology, but in the military, if you got a military, you say I'm, I'm a career military man. So that means I'm going to be here until I retire. I, I don't quit. So the apostolic is there's a certain part of the body of Christ that's all war. I'm a warrior. That's my anointing. That is of, of a fighter, of a warrior. Deliverance ministries, prophetic ministries are warring ministries in the body of Christ. You have the police force to protect the civilians or in the spirit realm in, in the body of Christ. The apostolic is the police force. We're the, we're, the, we're the warriors. We're the fighters. We're the one with the sword and the shield, and, and we're going into strongholds and principalities, and it's an attitude. It's a career. It's an apostolic career, and we deal with, Paul always dealt with mindsets of cities, the way the city fought, and he was dealing with these, trying to convince people. Uh, their mindset was wrong. You're serving an unknown God. Uh, uh, you got a statue there that doesn't speak, doesn't have hands, it can't see, can't re return to you. But I serve a living God. Now, the word arduous duties means difficult. Marked by great labor. Here, here pastors, marked by great labor or effort, it's hard to climb steep. It means, and, and God said the apostles and the prophets are to contend in the year 2021. Contend means, with, contend with cardinal inclinations and deviation from what is true. It, be it vertical or slant, a particular disposition of mind. You Christians are all crazy. You Christians, your God ain't no God. I mean, they have a mind slant that there's no God. God is not a living God. They have a tendency to go toward rebellion and stubbornness and disobedience. So apostles and prophets are called to deal with these mindsets that bring people back to the covenant of God, that God is not mad at them. You don't have to rebel like Adam and Eve rebelled in the garden. It all started back then, and this rebellion is still going through. Now. And the devil has learned how to use man's rebellion against him. Against God, he, he, he influences people. He influences uh, the, the ones that are, have the gold, the money, the silver, and the gold. The ones that are, have billionaires and millionaires, he influences them to influence the people. Because when you got millions, people seem, tend to look up at you. You'd be stupid as a box of rocks. But if you got a million dollars, everybody think you're some great one because you had to be great because you got a million dollars. Yeah. Didn't say that you run the lottery or something like that and don't even know how to handle the money, but at least you're a millionaire. So... The apostles and the prophets in 2021 are contend with principalities and powers. And uh, uh, to contend with that, and, and, but it takes 
the, uh, the intercessors and the prayer warriors going to take the intercessors and the prayer warriors to lift up the apostles and prophets just like they had to lift up Moses' arms uh, when he was in battle. They had to hold his arms up as long as he has his arms held up. They won the battle. And so when we're going into battle in this year, God is calling the church back to warfare. But it's not a carnal warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. It's not your physical body, but it's a spiritual body. And this warfare, when the glory comes on you, you're going to know how to operate in this realm. Amen? Paul said, I, I fought with the beasts of Ephesus. Uh, I, uh, that, that what, what advantaged me, if the, he said, if the dead don't rise out, why should I preach? If, the, if Christ didn't raise from the dead, I need to be sitting down drinking some beer somewhere. He said, because tomorrow we're going to die. But he said, God died. Now, the Bible says in Psalms 28, 4, they that forsake the law, the lawless, praise the wicked. Oh, they praise the wicked. They praise Hillary. They praise Bill. They praise, oh, Obama's so wonderful. Obama's this and that. Yeah, they praise the wicked. He said, but such as keep the law, contend with them. Well, you shouldn't talk about them. You shouldn't, you shouldn't talk about politics. You should, well, I got to contend with them because you ain't right, because they ain't right. Somebody's got to expose them. Somebody's got to uh, speak up the truth. Amen. Somebody's got to look at their spiritual foundation and see where their character is. Amen. I'm not voting on your character. I'm voting on what you believe in. Or do you believe in abortion? Do you believe in drugs? Do you believe? If you believe in that, then you're against God. And so I can't vote for you. Amen. He said, well, that other fella, he's, he, he's sin and he, he's got lust in that. So did you. God forgave you. Amen. At least he's trying. At least he's talking about God. At least he's inviting and say, I'm a Christian. At least he said, they don't want God. At least he's talking. At least he invited God back into the nation. So, I don't know. You have to make up your choice. So there's a new power coming to the apostle and the apostle. It's already here. It's not being released. It's already released. And uh, 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 the Bible says, Samuel grew and his words did not fall to the ground. So, we're coming to a time where your words are not going to fall to the ground. You're going to say your sins are remitted. God forgives you. Raise your hands. You lay hands on them, they start speaking in tongues. And you're not a pastor. You're just, you're just a saint. God's giving you that authority. See, the next move is for the saints. It ain't for me. I'm the coach. Y'all go out and play the game. Y'all go out and do the battles. I'm going to stand on the hand with my arms up while you fight. Amen? And you're going to get the victory. Praise God. Ezekiel's words, when Ezekiel said, spoke to the, he spoke to the bones, and the bones came together, and, the, and he spoke to the wind, and, the, and, and sinew and flesh came upon the bones. There was power in the word that he was speaking. In the 80, we said, was the month of pray. So we are to contend or struggle against. Amen? The devil will knock an uh, 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 apostolic believer down. He'll step on you and punch you in the face and punch you in the chest, and you'll be down on the floor crying, but when you get up, you get up swinging. Yep, yep, you may have knocked me down and knocked the wind out of me, but the fight is not over, amen. This is only round one, though. We got 15 more to go, amen. Come on with your best shot, amen. You couldn't knock me out the first punch. You ain't going to knock me out the last punch because Jesus is in my corner, and he's to coaching me how to whoop you. So he said, now go in and contend, and we're going in and contend with these nations and, and these strongholds, the entertainment mountain, the family mountain, the, the media mountain, the business mountain, the financial mountain. All of these things that have to become the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and Savior. Not maybe, not might, not should be, hope to. We're at the beginning. Do you understand we're at the beginning, the crux, the beginning of the kingdom age of Jesus Christ? And that means that they're going to do it the way the king says do it. So we're at the beginning. 2021 is the beginning of the kingdom age. So we got to begin to decree and declare what's coming. I'm telling you we're victorious. I'm telling you the devil's not going to win this battle. I'm telling you that the virus and any other virus that comes wrong after 2021, it can come, but it ain't going to touch you because God's going to cover you in the glory. That disease ain't going to, you ain't going to worry about wearing no mask. You ain't going to worry about running to take no shots. All you're going to do is stand in God and in the glory and in the anointing of God. So he said, now, he told Moses, he said, now, when you go into the land, I want you to contend with the enemy. Contend means to stir up, mess with. You know, like a dog, you know, you walk past that dog, always barking, and you take a stick and stick it in the and poke at the dog. That's he said, contend with the devil, mess with him. Oh, I don't want the devil going to get me. No, God said, I got your back. You go, you go. You know, like when you got beat up in school and, and you came home and you was crying and your mama said, you better go fight. 
Uh, don't come back in here crying. Don't come in here crying to me. You better go out there and represent the family. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it means, content means to strive. And the word strive means to devote serious effort or energy to struggle in opposition. Amen. Ain't that right? You've been out there doing your, your fuzz and your dancing. And your, she's been striving and contending and struggling. And, and that's, it's in you now to strive to finish. I ain't quitting this thing. I've been at this thing apostle for the last year. And I'm still, I'm still contending. Amen. It's getting better and better. Amen. We have to contend. We don't stop. We take a break. Like Jesus, he went into the wilderness and rested. But then we get back up and we go contend again because it's in our DNA. Each generation must contend and must let God direct who to fight with. Yes. And this is the key. Yes. Every generation must contend with the enemy and let God direct who to fight with. Deuteronomy 2 and 9, the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle. So there's certain things you're not to fight. He said, For I will give, not give you their land for possession. Because I have given our to the children of Lot for a possession. So you don't go fight with them. He said, verse 24 of Deuteronomy 2, he said, Arise, take up your journey, pass over the valley of Arnon. Behold, I have given into your hand Sihon, the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess and contend with them. Struggle with them. Fight with them. Mess with them. I'm giving you that land, but you're going to have to fight. Well, God, just give me the house. I don't, I don't need a. No, you got to go fight. But just give it to me, Lord. No, I want you to fight. I want you to know how to fight. You got, you got a generation that wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Everybody 20 years old, they don't know how to fight. So I'm going to take you in there and let them learn how to fight. God don't take away all your devils until you learn how to fight your devils yourself. Amen. I ain't going to come fight your devils. Don't call me the apostle at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm apostle. This devil's on me. I'm teaching you how to fight so I can sleep. Amen. No, you, can, you can deal with your devils. Amen. Amen. And I had that happen. Early in the ministry when we were over on, uh, uh, over on uh, uh, New Haven, I was teaching them. I told them, I said, don't y'all mess with no devils if you don't want to do it. So I had... Uh, uh, Three, four of them, they wanted to cast the devil out their cousin. She had demons. And that demon manifested, and at 2 o'clock in the morning, that thing was still manifesting. They wouldn't go. They, 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 Apostle, Apostle, uh, uh, you need to come and pray. I said, I ain't coming over there. I told y'all not to mess with the devil. Bind the thing up and, 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 and uh, bring it for prayer later. Bind it up. And they say about 6 in the morning, they finally got that devil bound <laughs> and quieted down. <laughs> I said, but I'm not getting out of bed. I told you I don't mess the devil if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't have enough word in you, don't go in there trying to cast the devil out. And so they couldn't cast the devil out because they, didn't have, they, they, they thought it was three or four of them they can deal with it. I said, okay, no problem. But they learned. But now they cast out devils. But they had to learn the lesson first. You got to know your authority and use it. Don't let the devil use it. So part two. That was a review. Now we're in part two. Warfare is going to be with the apostles and prophets, but the saints have to per, per, uh, support. 1 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Consider this. What soldier at any time, at his own, up, it goes to war at any time, who plants a vineyard and does not eat of the fruit thereof, who tends a flock and does not partake of the milk of the flock? For the law of Moses it is written, You shall not muzzle the ox, an ox, an, an ox when it is treading out the corn, it is only for the ox that God, is it only for the ox that God cares? Or does he speak certainly and entirely for our sakes? Assuredly, it is written for our sakes. Because the plowman ought to plow in hope, and the thresher ought to thresh in expectation are partaking of the harvest. We have sown the seed of spiritual good among you. It is too much, is it too much for we reap your material business? Now we know he's talking about the tithe and the offering that the, the, the apostle and prophet is supposed to live off the, the offerings of the saints. The saints are supposed to support them with spiritual, sub, or with natural substance because we're feeding you spiritual food. Amen. And so we're not to, uh, 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 the apostle and prophet should not be out working a job. 
They should be given to the word and giving you spiritual food and, and living and trusting God. I trust God for my resources. I have not worked in 35 years. I've been trusting God. I said, okay, God, you call me. I'm not going back on another job. You're going to have to make some kind of way to support me. I don't care if, it, if saints come or saints go, you got to support me. And he has. He has never stopped doing it. So I don't have to take up a $1,000 offering and $500. I just believe God. And God's people take care because they receive his word and receive his truth. Amen. And so the apostles do this as we go into warfare. We need support. Uh, somebody posted on Facebook, there's over 7, 1,700 uh, 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 1700 pastors or something like that dying a year. And I'm saying, who called you? If you uh, not dying, but leave the ministry because of the pressure. I said, wait a minute, who called you? You must have called yourself. Because my Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. If you ain't been chosen, yeah, you're going to get frustrated and you're going to quit. Amen. Because somebody told you, I, I've had pastors overseas. I've, I've, one pastor come up, he came, he's just crying and weeping. And, uh, and he's a bishop. He's supposed to be a pastor of the church. And, and he said, I just don't feel like I'm supposed to be in the, uh, the pastor in the church. I said, well, you're not. He said, I don't have to be. I said, no, quit. Because somebody said you should be a pastor. Because somebody came and prophesied he should be a pastor. But that didn't call him. I said, go do your business, man. Make some money for your family. Don't quit starving. Go do something. Let somebody else take, you know. Uh, uh, it was by the word of knowledge, by Jesus speaking through me. But, but he, he, he was so happy when he got, and he got baptized. He started speaking in tongues. He ain't never spoken in tongues. He got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. He was happy. Apostles have to remain focused. Focused. Though we walk in the, live in the flesh we are not carrying our warfare according to the flesh, using mere human weapons. Amen? So, 2 Timothy 2, verse 4 and 5 says, No man warreth, entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. So I'm here to please God. I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to please the church. God didn't call me to the church. He called me to his kingdom to work, to operate as his representative in the earth. Amen. So I made it very clear. Amen. Uh, I, God said, I ain't calling you to a uh, popularity contest. Everybody ain't going to love you. Everybody's not going to like you. In fact, they got some hard heads. Amen. You might as well set yourself, deal with your rejection, set your whole forehead like Flint, because there are going to be some hard people you're going to have to deal with. Don't take it personally. You're just the messenger of God. If they hated me, they're going to hate you, so get, get over it. So I said, okay, Lord, I ain't got no problem with it. So people get, sometimes people get around me and say, you, you kind of hard. No, I ain't just ain't walking in the flesh. You the one in the flesh. You the one on the altar crying. I ain't crying. Why are you crying? Hey, I ain't crying. Why are you crying? Oh, you hurt my feelings. Well, you're going to get beat up because you're in the flesh. Walk in the spirit you won't get beat up. Amen? Know that everybody ain't your friend. I'm older than all of you. Not older than Connie. Connie got me beat. But, but I ain't had but a few friends in my life. The rest of them were associates or acquaintances. You only get one or two good friends in your life, amen? But the rest of them, and I learned that I was in the military, so that's sort of where I get this association. You know, I, I met a lot of people, and they were gone. They're, they're here, and they're gone, they're gone. I mean, so I don't get so tired. I don't get connected to them. I don't, I don't worry about that. So he said, you're a soldier. He said, if the man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. So God said, there's a way that I want the apostles and the prophets in my church to begin to operate in 2021 that I can pour my glory on and I can put my anointing on. And so I want to give you some, some highlights, some points that he gets. So God sets the parameters of what we're supposed to do. God said, now, if you enter into the competitive games, he's not crowned unless he competes lawfully, fairly, according to the rules laid down. Now, we know the devil cheats. He'll cheat in the He'll elbow you in the head and form, <laughs> jump off the top rope on you and hit you with a chair. But you still got to do it lawfully Jesus' way. I said, I'll bind you in the name of Come out of him in the name of you. And you, you continue to eat or spit in your face, but you still got to do it lawfully. He said... It is hard-working farmer who labors to produce, who must at first be a partaker of the first fruit. Think over these things I'm saying. Understand and grasp their application, for the Lord will grant you full insight and understanding in everything. He'll give you full insight and understanding 
if you do it lawfully, if you study to show yourself approved, if you meditate in his word, if you pray in the spirit, if you intercede, if you walk righteously, if you tell the truth, if you produce the fruit of righteousness. In fact, Jesus died to get our spiritual fruit. He, gets, he said, in fact, I don't have time to teach it, but he talks about the fruit of uh, 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 peace, love, joy, righteousness, and all that, patience, persistence, and all that. He said, as you do it and show it to people, I increase it. I pour more anointing on you as you become even greater, even, even more humble, even more patient, even more kind. The more kindness you show somebody, and he said, it reflects on me, and I'm glorified because the people begin to talk about how great your God is because you're so kind and so gentle and, you, and you're helping people. He said, I will increase your fruits sown. I'll give you more understanding. I'll give you everything that you need. Leave, as I said, leave the politics to the politicians because they never, politicians never tell the truth. They will not, not answer you yes or no. You ever seen anyone news? It, are you going to, well, I am over here. Are you going to do, well, I'm over here. But they ain't answer you directly. They ain't not going to answer you directly. They'll give you all kind of opinions and, and this and that, and, and that. And that's why they're politicians. They go to college to do that. Amen? They learn school to do that. They want to be a political science major. They learn politics, how not to tell the truth, how to speak what they call goobly gook. Just, you, you go away scratching your head. What did they just say? Yeah. <laughs> you don't even understand what they just said. James 4 verse 1 says, Who, what leads to strife? Discord and feuds. We're seeing it on TV. Picket signs, Antifa, and, and pro-life, and I'm against uh, white supremacy, and everybody's got things. He said, how do conflicts, quarrels, and fightings originate among you? Do they not arise from your sensual, cardinal nature that are, that are ever warring in your body members? You're jealous and covet what others have. People are jealous of you because you're a Christian. They're jealous of you because you can do it better than them. They'll talk about you on your job and try to set you up to get you fired. They, you, ain't even, you don't even know the person. They're just jealous of you. And people in my job, you when I was working on a job, I, I used to work in the office, and uh, I was always whistling. I was just happy, full of the Holy Ghost. Just, my boss said, stop all that whistling. <laughs> So you're just jealous because you ain't happy either. I said, and, and then she called me in the office and started talking to me. I started talking about the Lord for about two hours. I didn't get no work done. I'm just in there. And she's just sitting there because she had a Jezebel spirit. And, and she didn't want, and that thing was crazy. She would call me in and try to correct me, and I'd start talking about God. And she started telling me more. Tell me more. <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Peter 1, 2, verse 11 says, Beloved, explore, I implore you as aliens and strangers and exiles in this world. To abstain from sensual urges, evil desires, passions of your flesh, your lower nature that wage war against the soul. So that what we're seeing is the enemy influencing these young people out in the street and they're out there busting windows and, 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 and rioting and stuff and hitting people in the head because their cardinal nature has been stirred. The, the, the wickedness of, of our soul and our emotion, cardinal nature will cause people to fight and, and, and think they're justified that they're going to knock somebody upside the head because they don't like the color of their skin. That's crazy. And so we leave that alone. The lust of the flesh causes war and the enemy knows that. He uses that, and he's using it against America right now. First one, number one, no, one, power, one uh, uh, PowerPoint. The first step to warfare, Matthew 12, 29. Or how can a man go into a strong man's house and carry off his goods, the entire equipment of his house, without first binding the strong man? The strong man. Then he may plunder his house. So our battle is not going out on the front line against Antifa and against what's picking in and riding out there and standing in. That is not our battle. Some of the saints got sins out there to do it. Our battle apostolically is to deal with the principalities and powers first. Those that are pulling the strings. Those that are influencing our politicians, our senators and House of Representatives and, and, and Nancy Pelosi and all these demons that they've covered it with. Those are the spirits we need to deal with. Amen. If we want to see America turn around, we got to deal with the principalities and powers that are influencing and financing these people. Amen? 
And so we got to deal with that. So I prayed this morning. Y'all want to hear a corporate prayer this morning? I prayed, Lord, it's time for George Flores to leave the earth. Take him out. Whether you take him to hell or heaven, that's going to be up to you, God, but you take him off the earth. As a representative of God, I command that he has to leave this earth now. It's time for him to go. He's, he's backing all these, all these antifas and all these groups and stuff. He's spending money. He wants to see uh, communism come in. He, wants, he hates it because you're prosperous. Can you imagine somebody hate you because you hating on you because you're doing good? How can you hate on me? I'm getting up 5 o'clock in the morning, go to work all day, come back home. I'm saving my money. I bought me a nice house and take care of my family. And you want to hate on me? Get your lazy self up and go do the same thing I did. That's how some, we have some family members like that. They think that you're rich because you got a house and a car now. Oh, Uncle, Uncle Hector, he's got a lot of stuff. Yeah, Uncle Hector get up 4 o'clock in the morning and go to work all day <laughs> just trying to take care of his family. And you think you're supposed to just give you some money. You don't want to do nothing. There are five prophetic issues that we're going to deal with in 2021. Number one is, key word, you're going to hear it a lot, is reconciliation. Of the fivefold, church members, the segregated church, God's calling the church into oneness. As I said, uh, there's the, the, the goat churches and the sheep churches are already separated now those that don't want it, the prophetic, they don't want deliverance, they don't want healing, they don't want miracles, they don't want it happening in their church. All they want to do is dance or they'll just put on a big robe and, and put their finger in the ear and preach to you. They're out. But the reconciliation is of the, those of the remnant. And when we come together, God commands the blessing. So reconciliation is a key word because God has shut everything down in the earth. And for the, from March to now, you had been at home and God said, reconcile with your loved ones. Reconcile with your cousin. Reconcile with your auntie. Reconcile with your family members. Get it together. I know y'all had some dis disagreements, but now you need to get it right because you're the Christian and you, know, you need to humble yourself and say, I'm sorry first, even though you didn't do anything wrong. I'm just testing you, but I need you to, to humble yourself in their sight and say, when I pour out my glory, you're going to get it and they ain't. So get reconciled. Reconciliation with society. The church is not reconciled with the society. We were put here as the salt of the earth. We were sh we've been shut in, dancing and praising God all by ourselves, but we don't go and deal with society. We have not dealt with society. I've been preaching it for 25 years. I say we need Christians to get in the, involved in politics. They need to be involved with what's going on in city hall, what's going with the aldermen, what's going on in government, what's going on on your job. You need Christians need to be involved, and we didn't do it. So what happened? The LBGQ community. They infiltrated the judges. They infiltrated the city councils. They infiltrated in Portland. They control Portland. They don't want the police there now. They want uh, uh, the Muslims to come in. Michigan, the same thing. They came in and infiltrated these positions that belong to the Christians. And so now we're crying, oh, look how bad the laws they changed. Well, you let them in there. We got to go dispossess them. We got to go contend for these positions that belong to believers. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 says, all these things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses against them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So all those people out there that are throwing rocks and inviting them, we need to reconcile them. We've got some kind of way to bring them into the kingdom of God. We got to say, he said, I've given it to Christ, and Christ has given to us that ministry to reconcile them. They're opposing themselves. They don't know they have demons. They don't know that demons are influencing them. Some of them do. Some of them have already submitted to Satan and Illuminati. And a, lot of, but a lot of them don't know. They're just going with the crowd. They're just being influenced. He said, verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. You in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made righteousness of God unto him. So what are we seeing? A battle between righteousness and unrighteousness in our nation. The unrighteous don't want God. The righteous want God. 
And then we got the ones that are hot between two opinions. Amen. You will not be hot between two opinions in 2021. You've got to get out and vote. Christians got to get out and vote this year. Everybody got to vote this year. Reconciliation means exchange or adjustment that is a restoration to divine favor. That's what reconciliation Restore back to divine favor. Favor. What's divine favor? Abraham, Abraham had cattle, sheep, goats, houses, servants, land. He had physical substance plus. He had money, silver, gold. He had the favor of God. That's what God wants to give us. Divine favor. Favor. Atonement. It means to put off, to placate, to cancel the sin, to cancel the transgression, to annul, to appease the wrath of God, to cleanse, to purge away sin, we reconcile back to God. Adam and Eve broke the covenant, separated us from God. All the prophets and apostles up to Jesus couldn't get us back to God. God, all the priests that went in and did sacrifices at the altar and the brazen altar and the altar sacrifice, they couldn't bring us back to God. They couldn't reconcile us. They only rolled our sins ahead another year. And we had to come sacrifice again. But Jesus became the reconciliation, the atonement to bring us back. He took our hand and God's hand and put them together and said, now y'all back family again. Jesus did that. He said, y'all can talk to each other now. The covenant is no longer broken. I restore to them, Father, everything that belongs to them. Give them all the creative energy that Adam had. Adam was smart. I mean, he named every animal on the earth. He had to have some wisdom. He had to have some knowledge. He said, give them all back. Do you realize we only use 10% of our brain? We ain't even tapped into the spiritual realm of how smart we really are until God, we get the Holy Ghost and God overshadows us, and you're going to find out how smart you are. One idea from God can make you a billionaire. Just one idea. George Washington Carver. He said, Lord, give me a, give me a, he said, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a revelation of the peanut. And from the peanut, they got soybeans, they got plastic, they got peanut butter. They got, he made all kind of stuff from one idea. See, that's all you need is one idea from God, the wisdom of God that seeks, that sits at the gates daily. We need God's wisdom. Now, step number two, to reconcile in 2021, Matthew 5, 22. But I say unto you, everyone that continues to be angry with his brother or harbors malice or uh, enmity in the heart against him shall be liable and unable to escape punishment imposed by the court. What court? Court of heaven. And whoever speaks contemptuously and insultingly to his brother shall be liable to and unable to escape punishment imposed by the Sanhedrin or whoever says, uh, you're cursed, you fool, you empty-headed idiot, shall be liable to and unable to escape the hell or hell fire. So he says, so when you are offering your gift at the altar, you therefore remember your brother that is a grievance against you. Leave your gift at the altar and go. First make peace with your brother, then come back Present your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser. While you're on the way traveling with him, lease your accuser, hand you over to the judge, which is the devil, and the judge holds you over to the guard, which are demons, and the demons put you in, in spiritual prison, bondage. So what he's saying is, you got to forgive your brother or your sister and don't come into church. Tell them, praise the Lord, and you know you got all against your brother at home. This is the first step to coming into unity in 2021. Reconcile. God said, I deal with your heart. Deal with your heart issues. If you, got, you offended somebody, go make it right with them. If they offended you, you go let them know, I forgive you, whatever you did, and, and you're free. Then I can put my glory on you. So you got to get that down. That's number two. Get the beam out of your eye. First, this is the first thing. We're in, we're in one. First, the first thing you got to do now is get the beam. Matthew 7, 22, 7 and 2. He said, for what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, you shall be measured to you again. Now he's talking about judging. He's given us this year to judge ourselves. You don't have to be afraid of judgment if you judge yourself. Lord, I'm judging myself. I still got a habit of talking too much. But I'm going to take communion, and by, by faith, you're going to help me with this, get my mouth in control. Put a guard over my mouth. Zip it. 
Cut it off. I repent of it. Then you're free. He said, why behold is the mote that is in your brother's eye, but you consider not the beam that's in your own eye? Or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of your eye, and behold, the beam is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, first, the first thing we got to do in 2021, cast the beam out of our own eye, and you shall see clearly and cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. So you got to get yourself free. Get delivered. Don't be running around the house talking about you got a devil and you need to be delivered. And you know you got a devil and you need to be delivered. I bind you. How you going to bind yourself? Because you got a devil yourself. <laughs> My wife used to do that in the early days. I bind you, devil. I ain't no devil. I'm your husband. <laughs> you married the devil. Amen. <laughs> Two, we talked about striving. Strive for the kingdom, not strive for anything else. Seek you, Matthew 6, 33. Seek, aim at, I got to quit. I'm not, I didn't even get to the second point. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom, his righteousness, the way of doing and being right, his way of doing and being right. You got to follow his ways. And then all these things shall be taken together and will be given to you besides. So don't worry about or be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own. Yeah. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. Yeah. While well, I'm wearing my mask because tomorrow I might get corona. The devil is a lie. He's in my tomorrow. His anointing and his power is greater than any virus anywhere in the earth. Either he's covering me or he ain't covering me. If I die, I'm going to be in his presence. If I don't die, I got work to do in the earth realm. I ain't dying. I mean, a lot of people, as I said, went to heaven by default, amen, because they wasn't doing nothing for the kingdom. The guy said, come on up, sit down. You somebody else. Well, I'll send another generation in. Y'all don't want to do it. I've had so many people run from the call of God. They just ran. That's okay. Well, if you don't want to do God's purpose for your life, then it don't make no sense for you to be here. It really don't. Every one of us was assigned something to do in the earth realm. Every one of us have people that are assigned to us for us to witness to or bring into the kingdom or help or do something. Somebody in your life needs your help. And so if you don't get in line with what God's doing, do you understand <clears throat> that angels are assigned to complete and make sure that you do your assignment in the earth? They are the ones orchestrating your jobs, where you're supposed to be, or the people you're supposed to meet. They're, 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 they're coordinating all this stuff for you to get you in position so you walk into your blessing or walk into that person you're supposed to meet. Angels are doing that in the background. But if you're not doing what God supposed, told you to do, then it's hard for the angels to work for you. I shared about the, the, the dream that I, the Lord took me to. I met wisdom, and uh, she said, I want you to go with these policemen, uh, angelic police, and they took me on their patrol, and I was sitting in the back of the car, and uh, we were on the street in the neighborhood, and uh, a mugger was beating up this woman and, and doing that. I said, angels, ain't you go help? She said, well, she ain't calling on God. There ain't, there ain't nobody praying, so we can't help. And we kept on going, and then... Uh, uh, Somebody, something else was happening, and, and, and the lady started speaking the word. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And the angels got out of the car and whooped that devil from pillar to <laughs> Whooped them down. They can't do anything unless we release them and we speak the word of the God, and, 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 and they'll, they'll operate because they're, 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 they're to watch over the heirs of salvation. So they're watching over us, but we got to speak the word. Amen? Amen. It's, like, it's like the angels are like us when we, you remember you just have a, when you watch the soap operas? Edge of night, search for the morning, and you're sitting there, oh, he's going to get you. He's hiding behind the door. You better watch it. That's when the angel up in heaven. The devil's watching. Hey, say something so we can come help you. Do something. Speak something. And you're sitting there, oh, the devil beat me up. Angels can't do nothing. We're striving for the kingdom. So there's a war against righteousness and unrighteousness in the earth. All these things are coming. He said, don't worry about that tomorrow because tomorrow God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Tomorrow, I'm, uh, tomorrow, next year, I want to pour out my spirit so strong. I want to send so much weight and so much glory in the earth realm. It's going to affect the believer, but, but the believer will be able to handle it because you're used to being in my presence. But the unbeliever, is going, it's going to convict them. It's going to put pressure on them. They're going to start having visions and dreams and all kind of stuff to, call, to draw them into the kingdom of God. God's going to, God is merciful. He wants everybody to be saved. 
He said, I'm going to pour my spirit on all flesh. Everybody's going to get an opportunity to say yay or nay. And so I am here to say to the body of Christ, get the beam out of your eye, judge yourself, and you will not be judged. Just judge yourself. I judge myself according to the word. I ain't right, Lord. I repent. I get it right. So when judgment comes, it ain't coming to my house. It's going to the next door because I've already judged myself. So judgment is here in the earth. The devil wants to destroy it. It's like a chess game, and, 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 and God, is going, God never loses a battle. So devil, shoot your anger, shoot your hatred, shoot your fear. Oh, my, my children are able to handle everything you throw at them. They're not rejected. They're not despised. They know that I love them, and they're going to stand strong against you. Go ahead and shoot it. Go ahead. Go ahead. You did, you did it to Job. He didn't deny me, and my church is not going to deny me. Go ahead and shoot your best shot. I'm going to let you shake it up, but then when I get through, when my light comes, you're going to run. Because the glory is going to hit the earth. And it's hitting the earth even now. So we're, we're in a place of uh, 5781. Press down. The weight of the apostle and the prophet's words and the pastor's words are going to become heavy on the hearts of people. And God said, my glory is going to come. It's going to weigh them down and convict them until they want to turn uh, from their wicked ways and turn back to the kingdom of God. So this is a, a part two of my message on the prophetic message. This is what God is saying. You're going to hear a lot about reconciliation this next year. Reconcile with the society. We need to reconcile with government. We need to reconcile and bring society uh, back into a moral, proper moral standing. The, morals of, the moral compass of the earth of America has gone haywire. There's no compass. We're just drugs, alcohol, debauchery, whatever kind of sin we want to do. Oh, let them do it. And Christians have not said anything. God said, wake up. Speak up. Start talking. Teach it to your children, your grandchildren. Teach it. Speak to the children. Uh, you know, when you get over 60, you don't care about anything. You tell anybody, anybody. You just, just preach to them. I don't care what you feel. Just blast them. We're going to blast you. We don't care about you, what you feel, what you talk about. This is what the Lord says. You got time to play with you. You're going to hell. Right now, you're on the way to hell, and I'm trying to stop you. Amen? You better listen. They hear it. They hear it. Especially when it's a good part. You know, your kids will hear what you say. They hear the good parts. Pop, can I get $20? No. Well, the word says, I got your favor. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, you can't sit there and, you can, you can, you can't sit there and confess the word. My God supplies all of my needs according to the riches in Christ Jesus. And they stand standing at the end of the line. Can I have a candy bar? No, I ain't got no money. Well, I thought you said your God supplies all your needs. So we have to be careful what we have. How much time I got left, Kurt? I'm at 52 minutes. Real quickly, I'll share this about the authority. I'll share this last three minutes. I can only go an hour. But uh, 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 Saturday morning, yesterday morning, I had a dream. In the dream, I was in a meeting. I, was, I had either, I don't know if it was my grandson, Josiah, or my daughter was with me. Uh, they were young. And I was at this place, and there was a little playroom in there. And I told them, go in there and play. And I was meeting with somebody or something. And after the meeting, I said, I need to go to the church. So I, I hopped in. I was in a van, and I hopped in the van, and I started going down the block. And I came to the stop sign, like, like, like up here on Jericho Road, that stop time by the railroad track. And as I was coming to the stop sign, the brakes wouldn't work. And the power steering went out on me. And I'm looking, you know, I was on this side of the road, and there was nobody coming. There was nobody behind me. And so it, it, the car had turned, and it was going, going across the lane. And I saw there was a, wave, a side of the road, so I pulled over the side of the road like I was going to pull over the side of the road. When I looked out the corner of my eye, to the, at, the, at the intersection, there was a cop sitting back there. The next thing I know, he put his light on me. And he came up behind me, and he said, what's going He said, what are you doing? You know, because I went across the lane. I went all the way across the road. I said, uh, uh, and he said, let me see your driver's license, your registration. And I showed him my driver's license. And... Uh, <clears throat> I said, I, I said, I, and I had forgot to bring my grandson and daughter. I was going to turn around when I realized that I left them. I had gone to the church, and I, was, I had left them in the prayer room, so I was going to go back and get them. So I told him, I said, I was getting ready to go back, turn around and go back, and my, my brakes was not working right, and, and uh, he, was a, he was a black police officer, light-skinned, little light guy. And I said, well, I'm the pastor of a New Heart Worship Center, and, I, and my church is right down the road here, right down the street. And I was just getting ready to go down to the church here. 
He said, oh, yeah, you are, you're a pastor, yeah. And so he pulled out his business card. He said, well, I'm not going to give you a ticket, you know, so I'm, I'm going to let you go and let you go. He said, he said, and I gave him my card. He said, would you come to my church and preach? I said, sure, I'll come to your church and preach. And so in the dream, I went to, uh, I, I went to this church. He invited me to this church. They picked me up and they took me, and they took me into this industrial complex. It was like, it was almost like, you know, with the petroleum plant, you know, they got back all the pipes and everything going on. This, this church was in this place. It was in, in, in this place. And I went in, in, it was a big, long building, but it was not covered. It was like, uh, I've been, to, when, I, when I go overseas, some of the churches, they don't have, they just got a little tin roof and, and dirt floor. And while I preached in this place, and uh, they were having service in there. And, and uh, I went in, and, and the guy had told me, he said, he said I, my pastor is a female pastor. And he's a, he was a policeman. And he said, I want to marry her. But she said, I want to meet a true apostle. So you, he said, I won't marry you until I find a, you find a true apostle to come. And so I came. I said, okay, I came. And so I, they, and I came in. And then uh, the first lady out of the office, she was kind of fat and stuff. I thought that was a pastor. No, it's just, that's an armor bearer. And she came out. And this lady came out. <clears throat> well, before she came out, the, the, the policeman got, was up on the stage and he was praying. So he was an elder of the church. He didn't tell me he was an elder, a pastor, a minister, but he, he didn't tell me that. So he was praying and, and, and doing the invocation and, and uh, 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 opening up the service. And she walked out, and uh, I just went up and greeted her and hugged her. And, uh, and she had an accent. I don't know, some one of the islands or somebody. And I was telling her, well, you got an accent. Where are you from? And she was kind of shy, and she wasn't kind of speaking. And she was kind of had her head down and wasn't listening, wasn't uh, really answering my questions. So she's just greeted me, and she went and sat down on her seat down, and they left me up on the platform to begin to speak. And I was, I was looking around the church. The floor was dirt. There was dirt floor. There was no, and it was, the building was, it was dirty, and it was in an industrial area. And I looked at the roof. There was no roof on this, on the building. That's why all the, little, the mud and water was there. There was no roof. It was a big building with no roof in there. And I said, wait a minute. Let me begin to, let me, let me pray. And as I started to pray, and I, I began to pray, I, Satan, I take authority over you. This church is covered. This church is supposed to have a roof on it, and it's supposed to be covered, and I bind you in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, the earth starts shaking. I mean, the people got scared. I said, don't get scared. I said, I just hit a stronghold. I just hit a principality, and it's just reacting to my prayers. And so that was, uh, and so I sort of woke up from that dream and just a confirmation that when the prophet speaks, things are going to shake in the heavenlies. Things are going to shake in principalities and powers uh, are going to shake when the word is released. All I said, uh, you will, the covering is back over the church. Put a covering back over this building. This building is operated by God. I don't know where it's in the dust, why it's here in this industrial area. Evidently, God wants it here, and this is the authority in this region, and back off. And the, and the whole thing started shaking. The whole, it was like an earthquake was going on. It was like, rrr, rrr. I said, praise the Lord. They were, the saints were getting ready to run out the door. I said, wait a minute, that's just God. <laughs> He's shaking the heavenlies. So it's a sign, a confirmation of what God wants to do in this coming year. Things are going to shake by the word. And when a policeman is in the dream, policeman in the dream means authority. They represent authority. And he invited me to come and pray and minister. And the, and the pastor said, I ain't marrying you until I find a true apostle or uh, prophet. So when I got him spoke, she said, okay, that's a true one. <laughs> that's a true one. Amen. Father, I thank you this morning for this word. Uh, Lord, as we continue into 2021, this prophetic uh, release of the prophetic word, what you're doing, uh, may your church reconcile. May they repent of their sins. May we judge ourselves quickly and get everything in order uh, now so when your glory comes, uh, you, we'll be ready. When you anoint us, uh, when this next move uh, of Satan comes, when the next plague comes, uh, he's trying to bring, and when the discord and, and the riots and stuff begin to happen, we're not moved by it. We take authority over it and we bind it and we say it will not happen. It will not be as bad as they say it's going to happen. We take authority over it now. We bind the enemy at the gate of this nation. The enemy at the gate gates in Portland and in Michigan and in Minneapolis, St. Louis, wherever the enemy is trying to infiltrate and bring destruction, we command, we speak peace, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. We pray and we bind these spirits in government, these wicked people in government, remove them out of their positions in the name of Jesus and put in the righteous in their positions, make righteous laws, righteous decrees begin to herald through America. And we declare, uh, we bind the devil here one more time this morning, devil, Roe versus Wade shall be reversed, and you will not have any more babies to kill. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm done. <laughs>